In this video, I'll be showing the macro settings that I use for photographing moths in my garden using the OM-1 and the 60mm macro lens. So in this video, we're looking at photographing moths. And what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm, I'm in my garden in Colchester and I'm going to be running this moth trap. If you don't know what a moth trap is, basically it's a, a box or receptacle that actually sort of catches moths. It doesn't harm them or anything like that. What you've got on the top here is a UV light. It's a strip light. Sometimes you could have circular ones. And what happens is the, the moths are attracted to the, to the light at night. You run it all through the night on a warm, muggy evening like tonight. Um, it's the first, second week of August. Should get lots of moths coming in here. So when they're attracted to the light, what happens is that they will land on these perspex sheets and down in the bottom of the moth trap, there's these empty egg trays. And the empty tr egg trays, they'll settle in amongst them. It's really like a bit of a maze for them. They find their way in, they can't find their way out. And they'll just settle down there quite happily for the, through the night. And next morning, I'll get up early, I'll come start to take it apart and I'll start to examine each one to see what moths I've got. Now on a good night I can have as many as 150 moths in this box. Um, did one last week, I had about 50 or so and it's quite interesting because it will actually, you'll actually see what moths you're actually having in your garden. So run this all night long, you can actually from inside the house you can actually see the moths flying in sort of around the light and there's a gap down the bottom what happens is they'll go down there and they'll sit in the in the cardboard trays all night long early next morning I'll start to take it apart and then I can take the moths and I can actually put them on bits of vegetation twigs branches and things that I want to photograph them on and generally speaking early in the morning they're fairly torpid so they'll sit there quite happily um, not all of them, some of them as soon as you take them try to move them they'll fly off but you know the bigger ones generally speaking are, are usually quite good the hawk moths will just settle on the end of the finger and hopefully in the morning we'll video and show you that but I'll show you some of the setups that I use and how I go about it and hopefully give you some good ideas this moth trap isn't one that I actually made myself you can make them yourself and just buy the electrics I bought the whole thing about ooh, eight or nine years ago. It's called a Skinner Moth Trap. And I'll put a link in the description to um, a website where you can actually buy these. You can buy very basic ones, which this is, and also more advanced ones, which cost more money. But um, it should work very well, and, and we'll see what we get in the morning. So it's the next morning, and I've come out there to start to take the moth trap apart and see what I've caught. It hasn't been a very productive night. I've had a look, there's a few in there, but not as many as I'd like. Conditions last night weren't ideal. Ideally, what you really want is a cloudy night with when it's quite warm and muggy. It's warm and muggy last night, but it was clear, and you don't get as good catch on nights when it's clear as when it's cloudy. But we've still got some. Often as not, it's best to have a look around the moth trap before you start to take it apart. Sometimes you'll find moths on the side of it and I actually found a Jersey Tiger there this morning which is one I haven't photographed before so that was quite good and I've already photographed that. The important thing when you're actually taking it apart is to have everything set up first. So what I'll do is start to take it apart and see what we've got. A lot of them will actually fly away. Um, you just have to accept that, there's nothing you can do about it, but hopefully we should get something this morning. So it's been cased just very, very slowly, looking to see what, what we've actually got. Now there's a few on the side, in, in the inside, on the side there. Um, so we'll just have a look and see. As I say, that when, what will happen is that often as not, they will 
just go on the end of your finger like that and then you can put them onto vegetation whatever log you want it's just a case of taking them now there's one there and on the back there you probably can't see it from that distance we've got one two three four five moths in these bits here and it's just a case of getting them out like that that one would really look nice it's got its antenna up bring it a bit closer so you can see it So the first thing I do, even before I see what moths I have caught, is to set up for photography. For this I use a cheap Black & Decker Workmate and I sight it reasonably close to the moth trap. The advantage of the Workmate is that the vise is very useful for holding branches and logs and the moths can look quite attractive when photographed on these. I can also clamp my Wimbley Plamp onto the Workmate and this is useful for holding smaller twigs, branches and vegetation. The advantage of the plant is that it can be twisted and manipulated into any position that I want and that's very useful. One advantage of the workmate is that you can pick it up and move it into any position in the garden that you want. Where I was photographing them over there, uh, the sun's coming up now and moths don't like being photographed in bright sunlight. As soon as it starts to warm up and the sun gets on them, they'll fly off into the vegetation so they can hide up. So what I've done, I've moved the actual plant and the workmate, you can just pick it up and move it around very, very easy. Another advantage of that is that you can constantly change your backgrounds. You can put it into a different position, perhaps where you've got sort of a darker background where you've got a slightly lighter background or a background with some good vegetation and you can also move it backwards and forwards so you can vary sort of how in focus the background is going to be so that's a big advantage also with this plant you can twist it around and move it into any position that you want so Obviously what you want to do is set the plant up first before you put the moth on there. They aren't going to like it being moved around like that when they're... Although some will actually tolerate that quite surprisingly. Um, one thing that you have to watch out for, and it's a mistake I've made countless times before, is that when you're setting the tripod up and you're getting close into the subject, don't knock the workmate with your tripod leg. I say don't do it, I've done it countless times. You lose focus and you, you, you try to get in closer. Bang, tripod leg hits the workmate, off the, the, the moth flies. I always say I'm not going to do it again, but you always forget and it, and it happens. It's just one of those things, but uh, try and be a little bit more careful not to actually get the tripod leg to knock the actual workmate. But here I'm going to get a completely different background to what I was getting over there. Over there, I was getting a nice green background. Here, I'm going to get a, a slightly darker background. So, what I'm actually going to do is try and put sort of the, the Jersey Tiger on there. We'll see how we get on. I make sure that I have the OM1 with the 60mm macro on the tripod, cable release attached, and focus stacking set on the camera. I also make sure that everything I may need is close to hand. I then slowly start to empty the trap to see what moths have been caught. Any that I want to photograph, I carefully transfer onto either the log, twig or some vegetation. Not all the moths will be obliging and some will just fly away as you take the cardboard egg trays out of the trap. Unfortunately, this is just something you must accept. With this shot of a willow beauty, I carefully coax it onto my finger and then transferred it onto the log that was held in the workmate. In this video clip I adjust the angle of the log and move the camera slightly to reframe the shot. 
you will see that there is a black line around the moth on the flip out screen. When focus stacking, you need to ensure the moth is within this black line when composing the shot. For this moth, I chose to do eight shots in the stack and the focusing differential set to three. With this video clip, I'm photographing a canary shoulder thorn moth. I demonstrate how at times it can be quite easy to coax a moth onto your finger, as well as then transferring it back onto the twig again. Not all moths will let you do this, and it's particularly annoying when you have a very attractive moth that you've not photographed before, and it will just not play ball. However, some can be very obliging, as this one was. I thought the canary shoulder thorn would look quite attractive on the lichen covered twig, as the colours of the moth and the lichen complemented each other. In this video clip, I am photographing a white plume moth, and I have decided again to use focus stacking. This time I had transferred it onto some vegetation. You can see in the camera's flip out screen how the wind is moving the leaf slightly. So I had to wait for a lull in the wind before pressing the shutter. You can see on the screen how once the shutter has been pressed and a series of images has been taken, the screen goes black. You will then get a green progress bar as the camera is stacking the images together. So I'm going to finish up showing a few other images that I've taken using the moth trap in my garden. One thing that you do need is a good identification book, because some moths can look very similar to one another, particularly the very small micro moths. It's also nice to keep a record of what moths have come to visit your garden. Of all the moths that we have in the UK, the larger hawk moths are probably the most attractive and they're usually quite easy to entice onto your finger. When photographing this privet hawk moth, it sat on the bark of our apple tree for nearly 20 minutes before it flew away. It's important when releasing moths that I always put them in amongst some vegetation. Otherwise, our resident starlings, blackbirds and robins will get an easy meal. All of the moths photographed in this video were released unharmed after being photographed. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Feel free to check out some of my other YouTube videos and subscribe to my channel to be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching.